Hector Molina here back at camp alongside my right hand man Justin Ayer for round two of action of the women's NCAA tournament where the UConn Huskies have just faced off against the Duquesne's, the Duquesne Dukes. The Huskies came out on top in this one 97 to 51 which was the same old story as the first round. However, it wasn't such smooth sailing for the Huskies in the beginning as they only found themselves being up by six after the first quarter. No, Hector, you got that 100% right. This was actually one of the more competitive games for the Huskies this season. At one point, they were even down by one in the first quarter. That's something you don't see with the squad too much. Right, and the reason Duquesne was able to hang with the Huskies is their ability to shoot from the outside. They were living and dying with the three. They were living with it in the first quarter. However, it was dying out as the game went on. However, the Huskies were able to show that they could shoot from long range as well, especially Mariah Jefferson shooting oh. six for eight from downtown. Unbelievable. And especially getting it done on the defensive end as well, creating many easy transition, busky, uh, transition buckets for the Huskies. Yeah, and now not to mention this was also the last game for Brianna Stewart, for Mariah Jefferson, for Morgan Tuck. I think Stewie ended up with 21 at the end of this game, right. Tuck and Jefferson with 20. What a great way for them to end their last home game in Gamble. Right, and they just set the example for the rest of the team. I mean, they've established their legacy from the time they first stepped on to campus here in stores. And that's something that Gene Oriama talked about in the presser at the end of the game. My kids are really huge basketball fans. And I know they watch a lot of basketball on television. So when I explain to them, like, do you know how a 15 seed beats a two seed? Well, one, the 15 seed has to play their ass off. That's number one. But even more important, the number two seed has to have a bad day. Like they just maybe don't come ready right away and they get down early or maybe they just don't have, bring that killer instinct that day or maybe they're looking to the next game or they gave the 15 seed hope early. I said, that's what happens in tournament games. There's obviously a lot going on and especially when, when the NCAA tournament starts, we have you know, an even even bigger spotlight on our team. You know, just because we're UConn, what we're hoping to do, planning to do. And, you know, I think the, the best way we block it out is, you know, once we step on the court, we know that this is our time. You know, get, get back into the mental state of mind that, you know, of what we're trying to do with the team individually and, and not worry about anything else. Yeah, you know, and another thing that not only Gino speaks about, but the players, the players rave about how they have heart, and that's something right. their head coach instills in this team. I mean, you saw at one point Brianna Stewart dove for the ball right on the court. I mean, you know, it really is something to watch if you're a high school player or a player that's trying to rise up in the big leagues. The UConn squad is a team to look after because they really do some things, especially heart-wise, that a lot of teams do not do. Definitely, and that does the heart – the heart that they show on the court, it doesn't show up on the stat sheet. And Absolutely not. everyone thinks of the highest scoring points that UConn puts on the board, and the heart doesn't show up. And that's only something you can see if you're watching this team very closely, which Absolutely. a lot of people in this nation obviously are. Yep. Well, the Huskies will keep it going Saturday when they take on Mississippi State in the Sweet 16 in Bridgeport. For Justin Air, I'm Hector Molina, and this is UC Sports.